In the 18th century, there were some writers who expressed their feelings and sentiments which were quite nostalgic in nature. This can be observed in James Thomson, Thomas Gray, and Robert Burns and even in Samuel Johnson. In the 18th century also some poets started taking delight in the beauty of nature and expressing their tender and touching thoughts on the imaginative richness of the past and the dead. Imagination and sentiment went hand in hand and the image of man transformed and he conquered the throne of heart. Among the precursors of the Romanticism, the first position is acquired by the poets Thomas Gray and James Thomson. James Thomson was a keen observer of nature which aroused in him new vision and emotions. During the reign of Classicism, his new sensuous outlook and deep sensitivity were unfamiliar. The mesmerizing scenery of the shifting seasons imparted him a great joy and relief. Thomson escapes from the drudgery of town life, its coffee houses and monotonous discussions. His The Castle of Indolence was published in 1748. It is written in Spenserian stanzas, it deals with the poet's retreat with his friends to Richmond in indolence. William Wordsworth praised the poem for its pure diction and harmonious verse. The poem is partly written in humorous vein. Thomson's famous poem The Seasons is written in blank verse, and it clearly implies the changing mood of the age. The poem deals with the sights and sounds of the changing year and the poet's own thoughts and feelings in the company of nature. James Thomson's The Castle of Indolence and the Seasons are very special for they can be deemed as the harbinger of romanticism. Secondly, both the poems embrace the long-forgotten life of nature as a subject for poetry. And finally, they discard the prevailing heroic couplet as a vehicle of expression, and accept the Elizabethan poetic stanza forms. William Collins and Thomas Gray occupy important place in the arena of romantic poetry. Collins' Ode to Evening is written in blank verse and it transports the reader to a new world. Similarly, his Ode on the popular superstitions of the Highlands is really interesting. Collins has described the new world of medieval times which is filled with witches, kings and fairies. Love for and interest in the Middle Ages is one of the characteristics of Romanticism, and Collins' poetry undoubtedly represents it. Collins' is Ode to Duty and Ode to Liberty convey sincere feelings. The great poem of Collins' is Ode to Evening which is the most delicately exquisite one. Along with Collins, Thomas Gray's contribution to romantic poetry is also noteworthy. He is a scrupulous artist, who wanted to achieve harmony of tone and the perfection of form. In Gray, we find a mingling of classicism and romanticism. His elegy written in the country churchyard reflects delicate human sentiments with a classic sense of perfect expression. George Crabbe recorded sincerely the life of the rustics in his poem The Village, 1783, and in his other poems The Borough, The Parish Register and Tales in Verse. Macpherson also published some poems of 3rd century poet named Ossian. The poems are highly romantic and they transport the reader to a strange world of heroism and supernaturalism. Macpherson poems Fingal, 1762, and Timora, 1763, are the poems translated by the poet from the Gaelic manuscripts. Similarly, Bishop Percy also made some efforts to enrich the beauty and richness of the Romantic poetry. He published them as Relique of Ancient English Poetry, 1765. This work aroused a tremendous interest in the folk ballads and a few medieval metrical romances. In the same fashion, Thomas Chatterton also tried to forge poems of antique nature. He was also fascinated by richness and mysterious nature of the Middle Ages. He ascribed his writings to an imaginary poet Rowley. The greatest of the pioneers of Romanticism are Robert Burns and William Blake. Burns is a classic example of simplicity and ecstasy. He didn't have the formal education but he invested his soul in his poetry which is highly pure and original. In his poems, Burns sings of the delicate and tender emotions of daily life. 
His poem The Jolly Beggars describes the human situation realistically and wonderfully. In his poems The Cotter's Saturday Night, To a Mouse and To a Mountain Daisy the reader can find the finer touches of romanticism, love, humor, pathos, the approach to nature. Byrne's poetry is a true representative of the romantic spirit for it holds all the traits of romanticism. William Blake also occupies a special position not only in the formative period of the Romanticism but in the whole of English poetry. Blake is a mystic of first order. His revolutionary zeal is the result of his knowledge about the decay in human life. He rises to a level of profit where he loses the sense of balance. His poetical sketches, 1783, Songs of Innocence describe his grief against the evil world. Oliver Goldsmith showed the romantic traits in his poems like The Deserted Village and The Traveller. He described the beauty of nature and human sentiments and melancholy with a new outlook for the poor villagers.